Terraria's melee class seems to suddenly open up to a bunch of amazing weapon choices around post golem progression. We have things like the Influx Waver, Horseman's Blade, and Terror Blade, which each in their own right can carry you through the pillars. Today, we're going to be looking at another spectacularly powerful post golem melee weapon that doesn't get anywhere near the attention it deserves. Or of course I'm talking about the Sky Dragon's Fury. I presume the main tenor for this weapon is the fact it's obtained from the Old Ones Army event, which is usually dismissed in playthroughs due to its difficulty. So I suppose the question is, does the performance of this weapon make the grind worthwhile? Before we jump into it, we're actually just shy of 6,000 subscribers from the big 100k, so if you enjoy my content, it'd be amazing to have you along for the journey. Anyway, let's see the best way you can obtain it. As mentioned, the Sky Dragon's Fury was added as part of the Dungeon Defenders 2 crossover update and is obtained from the Old Ones Army event. This can be summoned by talking to your Tavern Keep and purchasing an Eternia Crystal Stand and Crystal. It's also worth noting that here you can purchase traps using Defender Medals to further help you with the event. Now then, due to the way the Old Ones Army event scales, we are required to have taken out Golem for the final few waves to be reachable, and as the Sky Dragon's Fury is a Betsy drop, you will have to complete the event in its entirety. To make this as easy as possible, I'd recommend creating a completely flat platform in your sky with a minimum of 61 tiles in both directions. And while you can totally go with this, I'd extend your platforms by another 20 or so tiles in both directions to give yourself more room. Okay then, with the event underway, you're going to want to just bullet through all the early rounds as quickly as possible using a weapon like the Scourge of the Corruptor. The Scourge is great for this kind of stuff as it's able to hit a load of enemies at once while still dealing reliable DPS to single targets. But other fantastic options include the Vampire Knives, North Pole and Terror Blade. I managed to get to wave 7 pretty unscathed, and this is when things get a little spicy. Betsy is not an easy fight, as you're kind of on a time limit to defeat her before the crystal is inevitably destroyed. And just in the nick of time, Betsy is down. But that's only half the battle, as my terrible Terraria luck is here to ruin my day. Well, let's just say the amount of times I had to do the invasion went into double digits, despite the Sky Dragon's Fury only having a 25% chance to drop. Okay, so let's see how it performs. The Sky Dragon's Fury is quite a unique weapon, having two fire modes that function very differently. When left clicking, the weapon will spin in a 360 degree radius around the player, leaving behind an energy trail. It also seems this deals twice as many hits when an enemy is in the inner radius of the circle. When right clicking, the weapon begins to swing around in front of the player and randomly shoots three electrosphere projectiles that function almost identically to the ones fired from the electrosphere launcher. Unfortunately, these deal nowhere near the DPS of the launcher though, due to them dissipating much quicker. Against enemies, the spinning attack absolutely rips through crowds thanks to being able to hit seemingly an infinite number of enemies at a time. Against tanky single targets like Biome Mimics, however, it was a little hard to aim because of the random attack pattern it fires in. This meant that despite the amount of times I was firing, hardly any made contact with the Mimics. So with this in mind, I didn't have my hopes that high for the cultist, but I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. My experience with its electrosphere attack wasn't the best due to the inaccuracy, but I soon discovered how much damage its spinning attack could deal when landed correctly. Of course, there is massive risk that comes with this, but I guess that's what playing melee is all about. So far, I'm definitely favouring its spinning attack over the electrosphere one, as it not only deals more damage, but also delivers incredible knockback. Here you can see me standing entirely still during a vortex pillar and keeping away from anything that tried to get close. The only thing that could hit me during this pillar was the lightning from the portals. I'm really impressed with what this weapon has to offer. Yes, it's not perfect, but as a frequent melee player, I can't say no to having a weapon with both a ranged and close quarters attack. In my opinion though, unless you're someone who completes the Odd One's army and defeats Betsy regularly, the time and brain cells I lost farming for this thing is totally not worth it. I'm pretty sure I could have made it to the Moon Lord with weapons I already had in the time it took me to get one. What do you think? Is the Sky Dragon's Fury worth getting, or just another Betsy drop to forget about? Thanks for watching. For more Terraria content like this, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.